<laughs> Kia ora tato, no mai hari mai, ko daingleni taku ingoa. I am 65 and three quarters. I may not come from a line of wild bush women, or even women who have tramped, kayaked, and climbed mountains. I have not come from a line of women who have posed naked for photos that have been distributed all over the world. <laughs> However, I do come from a long line of strong, stroppy, courageous women. My great-grandmother came over from Ireland on her own on a ship to meet a man she could marry and forge a different life for herself. My grandmother had nine children and she forged a life for herself as a strong woman who kept her family together during the wars and depression. I was born at the end of 1950 and grew up to be seen and not heard. Yeah, right. <laughs> my mother taught me how to pick myself up and she taught me my love of song and dance as she sang and danced her way through her life. She also taught me that it was okay to be different. I was the one wearing shift dresses when everyone else was still wearing full skirts. At school, I talked too much and got strapped for it. I played sport and became a prefect. Then this, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> the teachers are still rolling in their graves, I'm sure. Then the 60s hit. I left school at 15 and I felt the urge to listen to music that changed my life. I wanted to be a hippie, but got pregnant at 18. Is this what hippies do? I asked myself. 1969, and I was married with a baby. Not really what I'd planned. So I picked myself up and started all over again. The 70s were just around the corner, and they hit with a vengeance. One minute, we're thinking of living in the country, living in an old farmhouse, growing our own vegetables, smoking marijuana, and living the hippie dream. The next minute, a car accident throws me into a 10-year journey of wheelchairs, paralysis, pain, and the unknown world of living with a husband who is paralysed from the neck down. So, with my life in a turmoil, living in a new house, in a new subdivision, with two young children and a husband in a wheelchair, growing our own vegetables, smoking marijuana, and living the hippie dream, I went about getting on with my life. Yep, I picked myself up and started all over again. I felt a bit like Wonder Woman, and when I look back, I think I was. In the summer of 79, I turned 30 and walked the heafy track. This was another defining moment in my life. I felt a freedom I'd never known. It changed my life forever. I climbed to the top of a mountain and saw that there was a world outside my life. I pushed my body to its limits and rediscovered who I was. The 80s took me to the Kapiti Coast on my own with my two girls. I had my son in this decade and then by 1989 I wondered again, who am I? I'm about to turn 40 and what have I done with my life? What am I going to do with my life and how am I going to earn enough money to keep my family in clothes and food? So, to start with, I had a 40th purple tequila party where, yes, everyone dressed in purple and drank tequila. Then, I picked myself up yet again and off I went to Teachers College. I sang and danced and dramaed my way through the next three years. Now this was more like it. I thought I'd lost my youth but found it in my 40s. Actually, I don't think I've lost it since. Another defining moment, and yes, there have been lots. I saw the movie that changed my life. There have been many life-changing moments. Thelma and Louise. Not the not nice bits, but the Bonnie and Clyde naughtiness and silliness and the adventures. I wanted some of that and I think I've had some. I have worked for women's rights, marched to reclaim the night, travelled all over the world and sung lots of songs. I have tramped and kayaked all over New Zealand. I've been to earth healing gatherings where I sat naked in a sweat lodge until I'd sweated out all my anger, frustration and past pain. I danced naked around many 
campfires, psychodramaed myself silly, did breath work until I could no longer breathe. I found out who I was, who I wasn't, where I'd come from, and where I was going. Well, I thought I did. Actually, it took me until I was in my 60s before I really realised this. When I turned 60, I thought, ah, well, this is it. I'm officially old. I hated it. However, I did celebrate it in style by having a 1920s dress-up party out at Matthew Soames Island in the middle of Wellington Harbour with family and friends for a few days. Yep, life is a party. I am now teaching women from all walks of life to have an education, to know that they have a choice, and to know that, like me, they can do and be more than they ever thought possible. I have found a freedom to be me, freedom to choose a new partner, this time a woman, and this one's for keeps. I am tramping and kayaking and walking the beach. I do struggle being in my 60s at times. However, I do say to myself, have courage, you can do this. And as mum always said, ah well, never mind, just get on with it. I look back and know that my biggest achievements are my three children, who are caring, loving, non-judgmental and fabulous people and I've been blessed with three amazing grandchildren who are all carrying on the tradition of being who they want to be. I look forward to completing all the great walks of Aotearoa, only three more to go, biking some more trails and kayaking more seas and lakes. In the moment I practice mindfulness and gratitude for all that I have and all that I am. A wee while ago, with a glass of wine to fortify myself, I posed for a photo dressed only in a vine. I may not come from a long line of wild women, but I have defined wild for myself. I am settling into my body, and my body is settling into me. It's never been easy being me, but I, ha but I have had some fun. And like the women who have walked before me and the women who walk with me now, I am a strong, stroppy, courageous woman.